Welcome, everybody. <laughs> well, with that, um, I should have done this before uh, we we were live. Uh, Harrison, I, I, Hina, I don't know who's who's going first, uh, but I'm happy to kick it over to you two um, and and tell us about goals. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, so exciting to be here. It's our first session, so I'm really, really excited to have this conversation. Um, I'm going to share my screen, kick us off with some goals uh, demo, and then we'll hand it over to Harrison to look at some of the really cool AI stuff that's happening in reporting. I really hope I'm sharing the right skin screen through Bevy. Um, We're and... seeing goals and reporting, so yes, I awesome. think. Okay, that's great. Okay, so um, kicking us off, I am Hina. I am the product manager for the Goals app in uh, HubSpot. And in just five minutes, I'll show you all the fun stuff there. But let's talk a little bit about what really is the value of Goals? Why are Goals important? What do they do really for our HubSpot customers? Um, and so really, Goals helps customers be intentional about how they want to achieve growth. Think of it like a roadmap to sitting down at the beginning of the year or the quarter and be like, okay, what are we trying to do and how should we get there? Um, let's look at these two teams that are up there and the, the wonderful scribbles I drew. Um, if you look at team A in the above scenario, they're really operating with no clearly defined goals and they're not hitting the mark. Some of them may be aligned, like you'll see this one person may hit a goal that wasn't really defined but lived somewhere in everyone's subconscious. Um, it's, it's difficult for us to understand how they're performing, absorb insights, or even understand what their desired future state is. However, if you look at the bottom, team B is operating with clearly defined goals and it helps focus their efforts, it helps them measure success, and really we can see the results of that in the alignment in contributing towards their company growth because they're all hitting their goals uh, and they know where they wanna go. So really goals also, in addition to helping bring this alignment and focus, helps customers understand data, reports, and insights in context of what needs to be accomplished and helps with being more data-driven when they're trying to prioritize efforts or action across the org. Um, and if we were to kind of distill that down to how can HubSpot really help with that, we, through HubSpot, want to provide customers with an experience that helps them define growth, measure that growth, and manage that growth through goals in HubSpot. And now that we've kind of established the importance of how goals can help an organization's growth, it was really interesting for us to see and learn that about 42% of reporting users don't actually know how to define what they need to measure. They're blocked at the very beginning of that journey to defining and growing in a more focused and data-driven way. But that's where goals comes in. Uh, I'm going to jump right into the product and kind of walk everyone through a customer journey of how our users can start to define and measure and manage their goals and develop a holistic lens to measuring their performance, focusing their teams and bringing alignment. Um, so I am going to switch over to the app and I would, I'm just gonna switch. I'm gonna make sure that everybody can see the app. Can you? Uh, you can't, okay. I need to reshare, so give me a moment. Uh, Kyle, is there a way to just share the whole desktop so I can switch between tabs? Uh, probably. <laughs> yes, it's on a, when you hit share, it's on like a slightly different tab. Like if you look at the top of the share interface, there should be like a little tab structure. Oh, okay, I see it. There we go. This is much better. Oh, no. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. there we go. Oh, no. Okay, so you won't, it, it's fine. Um, you won't be able to see the, the chat, but we'll let you know if anybody asks uh, okay. a really urgent question. But yeah, I think just hit the share button and, and leave, <laughs> leave the over. bevy tab as quickly as possible. Okay, select. Oh no, this is asking me to. Okay, I apologize for this interruption. I'm just going to get into this. All right, so. Uh, this is um, a HubSpot portal. I'm right now on a dashboard. And so let's see how to get to goals. Most important thing first. We're right there up in the top nav. Uh, you can click into goals. And what you land on is our overview tab that gives you a bird's eye view of all your goals and performance across the year. 
Uh, but let's get to this beginning of the customer journey. So um, creation of goals. There's two ways for customers to create goals. You can either do, do it through a template. So, you know, you come into goals, you're not really sure how to define a goal, but you can click into our template library and you'll instantly see a number of different goals that you uh, could set for your users or your teams um, across different functions. And so they're organized by service, and within service, you can set ticket resolution times, response times, tickets closed. Uh, for marketing, we have some ad goals today. So cost per contact in any life cycle stage or number of contacts, network conversions or contacts from first form submission. And then uh, within sales, we've got revenue, deals created, calls made, meetings booked. And then we've got forecasted revenue, uh, which is slightly different than the revenue goal. Um, and so this is just the title and you want to understand more what does this goal really mean the goal definition will help build that view so for example this revenue goal will use the deal object uh, they're using the property closed amount in home currency this is how it's aggregated and then we can also see what filters are being applied this really helps build a level of trust and transparency with customers because they can identify exactly how a goal is being uh, calculated for their organization Forecasted revenue is one that many sales folks are interested in. And the real difference between this and the revenue goal is that forecasted revenue is connected to the forecasting app. And so there's a few uh, limitations or it's like a slightly different experience where with forecasted revenue, you can only select one or all pipelines and you have to use the portal cadence that is set. So with those limitations, this connects really well into the forecasting app and you can do you can set goals and forecast revenue um, at the same time. Um, so now that you've set the you've seen the goal definition, you want to set the goal. Clicking on set goal takes you right into the creation wizard where um, the template has already been selected. You can enter a goal name. So let's let's do this live, admin goal. Um, within contributors, we've, you've got optionality. You can either select users. And so if this is for one specific person, you can pick that, or you could pick teams. Uh, we often see that customers will set team goals. So let's set team goals for us. Um, and then there's a number of different options on how frequently you want to track those goals. Is this going to be a monthly goal with 12 targets or a quarterly goal with four targets? Uh, it truly depends on what the organization or how the organization is tracking their, their growth at, and what their selling cycle is, how quickly they're earning revenue. So this would be widely different based on what your business model or product is. Um, we'll, we'll pick monthly for this example. Uh, going into this next screen, really, this is like the, the biggest step that you'll do in creating goals um, is setting targets. And so I'll pick all pipelines for simplicity. Uh, and this is this, this is our team switcher. So either you are setting goals for team A right now, apply target allows us to uniformly just apply it to all uh, the months, which makes it super easy. Um, and then this is a really cool one. Now that you've set the team goal and you or like, wait, I want to set goals for my users as well within that team. It's all in the same step. So I've got all the users within team A. I'm going to assign them all a $1,500 target. And that's because I want to set them stretch goals. And that's, that's a really interesting thing about this experience where individual goals don't have to ladder up to a team goal. And you can keep that difference where you're pushing your employees or individual users to perform better uh, than what or perform at a stretch target. Um, let's do 500 here and then let's do a thousand here. And so actually let's do 1500 here. Okay. Um, we did team A, now we're going to do team B. For team B, I'm just going to set at the team level because that's what's most relevant right now for me as an organization. And so apply the target. Here you can set a number of different notifications. So this will send notifications when the goal is kicked off. If you select that, it becomes exceeded, uh, achieved, or missed. These will all kind of help your team stay on top of um, what the status of their goal is will do done. And so this is this is now creating the goals, but we can navigate away, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And this will eventually create the goals in about a few seconds and populate these views that we call the console view. So this is really where you can manage all the data that you've created. 
Within the overview tab, uh, you can switch around between user and team, uh, use any of the filters to pick a different goal that you've set, um, select uh, which user specifically you might want to set a goal for. But really, this is like your world of filters that you can play around with to set the view that you want to see. Um, what we're seeing here is all the users who have a revenue goal and then how their performance has been over the course of the year so far. And it's, it's an interesting view to get very quick insights on performance. For example, if I look at Aaron Bowen in this first row, he did really well in June. He exceeded his target. But then when I look at August, something went wrong there. He's just done 20%. So as a manager, this instantly gives me the, the spark that I need to investigate further. What is going on? Why are we not hitting our goals? How do I get there and start those discussions internally? Um, that's really what our overview tab will do. But we know there is a need for managers to be able to quickly see what's in progress. And that's what the Manage tab does. You go into Manage and what you'll see is a snapshot view of just the targets that are in progress. Nothing before in the year, nothing after, just a very present in time snapshot. Um, and then fine. OK, so we've done creation. We've done a little bit of management. And now uh, I'm going to go back to creation for a second to show you this other avenue to create a goal, which is you looked at all the templates and you didn't really like anything. So now you're going to define your own, own goal from the uh, create from scratch custom goals wizard. And really, that is you come into this wizard. Um, there's an, it's like a clean, it's a clean slate. It's use your imagination. And so you can select any object that you want. Maybe I want to set a goal on the company object. Uh, this does pull in any custom objects that you've created. And so that really provides an opportunity for managers to create very, very tailored and specific goals to their organizations, custom goal, custom properties, custom objects, and uh, define what they really need to measure. So getting into company, and then I'm just going to prick uh, a property. Let's do number of associated contacts. And I want to sum them. Uh, let's do a date property. So here we want to see the, there's a number of different options, but let's look at last booked meeting date. And really what I'm doing is I'm setting up a really, really specific goal that is measuring number of the number of associated contacts against the company object, which I'm actually going to change to deal. Um, uh, sorry, no, that broke. Uh, that did not show up as I wanted. Uh, so we were at number of associated contacts. Um, anyway, so uh, we picked a property, which was um, Let's do time last seen. And then we want to track it. So we think higher value is better. Uh, this is currently not producing any uh, units. So we kind of know as we're setting this goal up how this is going to get calculated and what is what it, what is sample. Or like if I have data in the portal, how this is going to show up. But this is not it. If you think that your goal needs to be even more specific, you can go into filters and add any number of filters that are applicable to the goal to become even more specific. Really, the, the whole power of custom is to be able to set up and define exactly what you need. From here on, once you've defined the goal, it would go into the same steps that you saw when we were creating a template goal. I'm going to pause and just look at the comments if there is any um, questions that might be important uh, to cover, or perhaps we can circle back in a, in a moment. Yeah, I, there are a few. Uh, ooh, there's kind of a lot in the q and I haven't been staying on top of that. But uh, one thing I just want to say real quick, as I, I love this new goals experience so much, it was not that long ago that goals in HubSpot was tucked away in the settings page. It was hard to find, and there wasn't a lot of space. Now you have this, like, it has its own real estate. It's a full screen experience. And there's so many different levels and things you can go into. I think it's really exciting. Um, um, I, let me let me filter through the Q&A and come back to you on whether there are things you should pause uh, on. But uh, if you want to keep charging ahead for now, I think we can circle back later to the questions. Awesome. One thing, Hannah, that there was a little bit of discussion on that maybe we could talk about is um, just like, can you show the different types of aggregations? Because I know some folks were previously looking at like uh, just revenue reporting where it could only be a currency base. So mm -hmm. doing something that's more like unit based for, let's say, like a number of deals as opposed to like a revenue from those deals. Okay. So the number of aggregations that we have, um, 
I'm just going to go back into the app. Uh, when we are creating goals from scratch, let's look at um, deal and amount in company currency. And so we have some average, minimum, maximum, and count. And really, I think for like a company currency, you would probably use some or average depending on what it is that's most important to you. Are you trying to, for example, just look at the total uh, revenue that has been earned or, or deals that have been closed? Or are you trying to, for example, increase the average amount of your deal size? And so the average might be more important to you. It really it, it depends on what the purpose of the goal is or what you're trying to optimize for. Um, but these would be our sums, oh, sorry, our aggregation types that are available specifically against the amount and company currency uh, property. Does that help answer the, the question? Uh, I'll let the person who answered it uh, asked it weigh in on the chat whether it was helpful. There are some good relevant questions here in the Q&A that I'd like to, to ask you. Uh, one person, let's see. Oh, dear. Bevy, what are you doing? OK, uh, <laughs> pause a minute. I had them here, and then it scrolled. OK. Um, are you able to edit the filters after using the template? So if you select yeah. the template, can you edit them? Not at the moment. Um, edit capabilities are something that we're all looking into. There's a number of different implications to an edit experience that we need to keep in mind, especially the keeping parity between the goal definition, previously created goals across that for that template, and then future created goals. Uh, we're working a little bit on figuring out what the right experience there is. So edit capabilities definitely on the docket at some point. But right now, once you set up a goal and publish it, there isn't a way to go back and change the definition. Got it. Uh, is it possible to set individual goals for users by deal type instead of by pipeline? Ooh, no, not at the moment. Um, I want to say maybe in the custom goals. So we could go into deal um, and then select amount and company currency. And I think we could apply a filter. So that would be the best way to do it from a custom capability perspective. Um, for a specific deal type, I want to say if you are tracking it against um, a custom object or a custom property, that could be the way to um, set up a goal that is very specific to specific deal types. But the pipeline would still come into play. It's just how it connects um, the revenue earned. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Uh, yeah. that, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that answered the question. <laughs> Again, uh, if you have follow-up questions on any of these, feel free to drop them in the Q&A or the chat. Uh, we'll, we'll circle back to them event eventually. Uh, Jenny asks if you can switch currency. So you've been doing a lot amount in company currency. Yes. Can you have goals in other currencies? Uh, you can have goals in other currencies, essentially, but there is a bit of a um, confusing experience where you could set a goal in a different currency and it will pick your portal currency. But when you see it in the overview tab, uh, for which is when you would land here to see your um, data, it will not show you the dollar sign, but it will show you something called units. So it, the, it's being calculated in the currency of your portal, but these, the signs and the symbols aren't carrying forward. And so that's a little bit of a confusing point for customers. That is, again, on our, our roadmap to fix. Um, but just, just flagging here that, yes, you can, but it might not shine through. In these <laughs> okay, <laughs> love the transparency. I, do we know if there are more templates coming for goals, potentially goals for line items, the new lead objects, et cetera? Yes, we are not specifically, I can neither confirm nor deny if it's going to be line items or the lead object, but we are actively working on expanding the template library to be more holistic across the different use cases in HubSpot. So you'll be seeing a lot more. Cool. Well, I, my personal commentary again, I think it's so cool that marketing and sales and service uh, goals are all in one experience now. Uh, for a long time, sales and service kind of were, and marketing goals, if they existed, were like, and now it's just like goals and HubSpot live here, and I love that. Uh, very HubSpotty. Do we know <laughs> if notes and or emails will be something we can do a goal on? I see we can do calls and meetings, but not seeing emails or notes. That's a good point. Um, I am. Uh, I'm going to make a note of that. Right now, we can't. Um, but I am 
I'm loving the the brainstorming and the comments that are happening. Uh, currently, we can't make uh, notes or email goals, though. Um, so this question might be a duplicate of the one we asked earlier about deal type. Is it possible to set goals based on specific properties, for example, total revenue based on line of business or countries? So again, would that be the filters thing? Uh, yes. So if you, so it can be both a combination of the filters, and if that is actually a custom property, it will get pulled into the custom goals wizard, and so you will be able to set a goal on that and then apply further filters if that is required. Cool. Uh, just one point of clarification here: in the template goals for revenue, are closed one deals attributed to a month they based on the month that they are marked as closed one? Yes. Um, ooh, we're getting some questions about um, uh, packaging. Is this only for Sales Hub? I assume Custom Goals is only for Sales Enterprise. Uh, custom Goals is for Sales and Service Enterprise today. OK. Yeah. But the uh, other goals, the templates and things, do you know where they're packaged? Yeah, so Revenue Goal is available at Pro, the, and Marketing Template Goals are available at Pro. And so I, it might be helpful for me to just go through the library instead of <laughs> out. Uh, I realize there's quite a few. So uh, service uh, templates are available at enterprise. Marketing templates are available at pro. Within sales, revenue and forecasted revenue is available in pro, and the rest are in enterprise. Um, the, the thing with goals, though, is also that it's not only tier subscription, but it also it's also a seeded feature. And so you need to have the combination for you to be able to assign a goal to a user. Do you need a seat to create the goals or just like Ooh. in order for someone to have a goal set for them? That like is... the admin could do it. Yeah, admins can do it. OK. Admins cool. can, do it. Um, can you archive goals? Uh, not at the moment, no. Might want to know more about that. Uh, Cara, uh, just interesting use case there. Uh, will goals show on the user profile someday rather than in this goal page and or reporting? Like if they go to their settings, there would be a section called goals so they can see all of the goals they are meeting. So I uh, guess for an individual user to see how they're doing on their progress. Is this the page that we're talking about? Going within settings? Is this? I think so. Yeah, probably. I'm not sure. Well. Uh, we don't have any plans to do that at the moment. I would be curious to understand, though, do users go to this page often to consume information about their goal, about anything in HubSpot? It seems more like a settings page. Yeah. For an end user to track their individual progress, is the expectation that they go to the goals page? Or... Yes. OK. So there's actually, this might be a good segue for me to, because uh, I do want to hand off to Harrison very quickly. Um, I want to show you a couple of different things of where we meet goals users in the workspaces that they are working in. So this question is a good segue. Um, for marketing ad goals and for forecasting, you can work directly in those apps and see your goals. For all other goals today, you would have to come into the goals app and see your progress on the overview and the manage tab that we just saw um, a second ago. So this is where you would see it. You would be able to filter. But for example, if I'm looking at Aaron Newman's goals, I would just land on this page and see my goal progress for my revenue goal or any other goal that I have. Um, but let's look at this for a second. So if I go into sales and then into forecast, we have a, an embedded goals experience right within the forecast app. And the purpose there is that we know a lot of forecasting reps will usually have a revenue goal as well. Sorry, a lot of sales reps will have both a revenue goal and a forecast that they're keeping on top of. So it's, it's really our attempt of meeting customers and users where they're working and spending most of their time in HubSpot. And so you can see the goals here a manager or admin could use this create goal experience and go directly into the wizard and select, um, or sorry, sign a goal, select the other fields and set it up. So it's the same creation wizard with some things pre-populated and then it neatly flows into your forecast uh, experience. Similarly in marketing, if you went into ads, you could go into the ads app and you've got to create goal. Um, this takes you directly into the creation wizard. You can select which goal you want and 
move forward and set it up. So this is again for marketing folks working within um, just the marketing app. They don't really need to go into the goals experience to see them. It's all here. And then once you have set up the goals, you could go into the analyze tab. And this goals tab would give you a snapshot of exactly this page, which is the um, overview tab that we've seen. So it's well connected with both these apps where you wouldn't really need to ever leave the app experience to do goals. Um, curious if that is, uh, I am so sorry for all the screaming. I see the comments. <laughs> I thought family visiting and they've got a bunch of screaming kids down there. <laughs> I did not realize this would flow through. I would have found a quieter spot. <laughs> oh, it's fine. I had my baby on earlier, so it's, it's totally fine. Oh, I love uh, the the I've I, I've spent most of my HubSpot career talking about Sales Hub, and I love the the forecasting space and that goals flow through there. I did not realize that the goals experience also flows through to like ads and stuff. So that's I love that goals are everywhere now. This is a this is in a, a platform approach we're going to be investing in more heavily in 2024, where we want to um, meet people where they're working in their workspaces for all the important use cases across um, your HubSpot customer journey. Essentially, um, one final thing before we land before I head off uh, to Harrison, and then I can jump into comments and also answer questions. Um, I am going to show you some very lightweight reports that we have four goals today, which are currently in private beta. Happy to ungate to anyone who would like to see, but we will be rolling out into public beta soon. Um, and so here we are. So this was the overview tab, manage, um, analyze in beta. will show you goals reports for all of the template goals that you have set. And this is essentially a comparison of actuals versus the goal targets that you've set. It's kind of our attempt at providing you with the starter reports that you need to bring that kind of aggregated insight into your day-to-day. -day. And so what you can do is a number of things. You can select this, you can view the report in the SRV uh, and uh, make any edits, customize it further, and then you can save it into a dashboard. And that's really where it helps um, complete that data story that you're trying to build, uh, which is what one of our goals was with being able to provide um, reports that are savable to a dashboard. And so if I saved it there and I go into my dashboard and scroll right down where I saved it, I think this is the one, here we go. And so now this report lives here with all the filters that I applied. Um, it, it's pulling my goals data in and it's really helping complete that story of this is where we're trying to go, this is how we're doing, and here's a report that backs it up in context of everything else on the dashboard. Um, with that, I am going to get back into the slide deck because I will need to share my screen again for a second. Uh, but that was largely where what I wanted to show everybody in the Goals app. Uh, it's looking very different, like Carl mentioned from last year, but really, it, Going forward, we're going to continue investing into this uh, experience. We really want to help customers build their journey to growth. So essentially, you should be able to track each step of the way, uh, how you're doing, how you would like to do, and help align your teams while also being really integrated with reporting. So it closes the loop for our customers. You can define, measure, and manage how you would like to grow. But this is not the only way to uh, get insights. We know how important AI has been recently in our lives. And I'm going to hand off to Harrison to show us all the really cool things that AI has been, uh, sorry, that reporting has introduced with AI. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Anna. OK, so we'll hop into some stuff. Um, I'm going to talk about the lovely world of AI in a moment. Um, but I want to give a little bit of an intro and kind of get us going. So we should be able to see the screen. Yeah, it looks like I can see my own screen. So hopefully that worked. All right. Yeah, we can see um, it. Cool. So um, a few different things I want to talk through today. We'll be a little over the place as we go through, because some of the AI stuff is spread in different spots. There's also yeah, 34 minutes before AI entered the chat. And we did it. You can put the bingo card. Um, 
<laughs> love it. So as we go into kind of the space, I think one thing I want to kind of start to dive into first is a little bit more where you can see AI, or sorry, where you can see uh, goals in reporting. Um, I know Hannah just mentioned that one spot. There was a question about gauges. So I was going to pull those up really quick, talk about that for a moment. And then I'll use that to sneakily segue into uh, some of the reporting AI stuff. But before I do that, a little bit about where I am in the kind of tool and why this is the stuff that I care about. So this is going to be a little, maybe a little behind the scenes, but we got a bunch of admins here and I think admins like to know a little bit of what's going on behind the scenes. So might as well talk about it. Um, so the team I work with is called RAS and what that stands for is reporting as a service. And so hopefully um, you've noticed that reports across HubSpot kind of look the same uh, everywhere. That's intentional. <laughs> um, and so the big thing there is we have kind of a team internally that sits in between this layer of you see all these different reports across the platform. There's all this data that you all are working on and keeping in kind of these lower sources. And we're this kind of in between spot. And so what we're really trying to do is we're trying to make it consistent, easy to use across the platform. And there's a lot of little things we've been working on over the past couple of years to try to make it up kind of reports work similarly across the board. We still got a long way to go, but we're super stoked on that. But as we think about the pathway of heading into what I'm going to talk about with gauges really quick, what I'm going to talk about with some of how some of the goals are connected, some of the AI features. One thing that I'm really passionate about is I feel like people don't actually want reports, they want answers. And so I think when we think about the reporting platform, it's kind of a funny thing to work on. Because at the end of the day, like I could add a million new reporting features, but if they're not helping you answer your questions better, like we all have dealt with those platforms and it's super overwhelming. There's 10 million settings, um, but it really doesn't answer the question better with like the 50 different visuals. And you all probably have had like, you know, some presentation where there's a slide deck and there's just a chart where you're like, I don't even know what this thing means. So that's really what like when we think about RAS, we think about the space that I play in, some of the things I'm going to talk about. If it feels a little all over the place It's because I'm not really at the very top of the stack of those apps like what Anna showed of like in those goal spaces. I'm also a little bit, you know, not all the way down the data. So um, really what I want to talk about is kind of like how do we make the story behind it? How do we tell the story of what's going on with data? And how can we use some of the tools that were released recently in reporting? How can we use AI to really free all of you up to keep going down that pathway? So hopefully that tracks. Hopefully we'll go that way. Um, I'll keep the chat and the Q&A open. So uh, feel free to interrupt me um, and we'll go for it. And then uh, James throwing out the when the default report style guide release date. James, we talk about this all the time. I know you. Um, we'll get that out before too long. We'll, we'll keep playing with it. All right. So um, I'm going to hop on over into the system really quick. Um, and so one thing I just want to call out off the top, uh, this was just kind of as I was talking through things. Uh, one thing you can look for is you can look for goals in the template library. And you will get some of those same charts that uh, Hannah mentioned. So I know you can look at it through the goals app. Feel free also when you're in this kind of report space to just type in goal. And you'll see some of those pop up really easily. So that's an easy way to get there. But um, the one thing I wanted to talk about before we got there, before before we dive into AI, uh, really quick was gauges. So I just entered the custom report builder, and I'm gonna pick. Uh, let's just pick deal because that's an easy one that makes sense to set a gauge on. And once I hit next, what you all see is there's a little beta. And it's called Gages. Um, this is actually in public beta right now. I know Kyle made a fantastic video about it, uh, but to talk about it a little more in depth, the reason I wanted to bring this up is when we think about uh, goals, something Ken and I have been talking a ton about is like, how do we get goals more into the application? And so I know that there's kind of a logical spot to say like, hey, I'm looking at a gauge. Wouldn't it be great to have a goal with that? And that's something we hear loud and clear. So don't worry, we're definitely like hard on the pathway going after that. Um, but did want to show you all how this works. Uh, as you're thinking about some of those goals that maybe don't make sense in kind of such a codified manner. I know there's times that we have goals organizationally that like there's not really a property or something that's representing that in the system, but it's more like a large organizational goal or it's more something that you're talking through with folks. So hopefully a gauge will make it a little easier to talk about some of those things. And so um, when we think about some of those aggregates, I'll just pull over kind of deals to keep this really simple. And what you're going to see is a gauge, which is awesome. Um, but obviously not that pretty yet. Um, so if we go over into chart settings, we can start to play with this. We can also filter this down. That's a pretty big number. So let's maybe go with close date and let's pull on over. Um, let's say is we'll go. I wonder how many are in this week. 
this is our one of our test portals so there's a lot of stuff in here so maybe it'll actually give us a reasonable number 29 that's a reasonable number okay cool so now that i've done that you can go into chart settings and on all of the types of visuals you see this probably has one of the smallest areas to look at and one of the smallest places just values and fields so really a lot of the magic for charts or for gauges uh, is over in chart settings um, and so I'm going to pop over here. First off, we have a min and a max. That's pretty easy. It's our zero to our top point. Let's just go 30. Let's make ourselves feel good and put ourselves at the top of the gauge. And then obviously we can start to add bands. And so there's a lot of fun stuff we can do to really add kind of whatever makes sense to have all of these different ranges. And the reason I find this really, really important and kind of the big thing I want to talk about that I continue to harp on is telling the story of your data through reporting how do we make it easier and i think about two things there as i think about one it's how can we put more of that story into the platform and two it's how can we free up admins to kind of have more time to go after high value things instead of getting badgered with a million little questions and so this is one of those spaces that being able to pull this together and let's say um we'll go let's see if i can do this let's go 6 uh, 12 18 24. Did I do the math there correctly? Aha, I did. Um, so now we get some sweet gauges in here. And then what's really fun about this, we do have two color codes. We have a red to green and a green to red just to help you out. I know sometimes it can be a little crazy with all the colors, um, but this kind of you know gives you a simple palette. You can obviously go advanced, pick any color that your heart desires, but a couple simple ones just to make your life a little easier. Uh, again, this is private beta, easy to hop in here. Just wanted to kind of show this really quick. We are on the pathway of getting goals more connected to these. But a nice way that if you have some of those goals and you have some things you'd like to throw on a dashboard, it makes it really easy to kind of put this up there, see this visually. It tells a little bit of a better story than some of just like the KPIs you're used to before. Um, let me check the chat and see if there are any questions. So happy to see just gauges. Like that's what I was yeah. looking for. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just looking for hype. That's really what we're trying to do here. Uh, no, so yeah. Oh, thank you, Kyle, for dropping the link. Um, please definitely hop in there, give us some feedback, tell us what you think, um, tell us we need goals connected to this because uh, that's what we got to keep working on but something fun to show and now i'm going to use my beautiful segue to move us into talking about more ai stuff um, but before i do i'll wait for a half a second see if there's any questions on this okay cool uh oh this can be super see eat just more hype i'm here for it all right so <laughs> Um, let's say we would need to now save this and let's, let's put myself in the admin's shoes and you've built this beautiful, gorgeous gauge because you're a very highly skilled admin and you're helping out your company. Um, and now you need to save it to a dashboard and you've all dealt with the problem though. If you've built this beautiful gauge, you've saved it to a dashboard and then everyone starts to bug you and says, what the heck is this thing that you put on my dashboard? And so what's new and we kind of snuck in there. Um, it's a little silly that we didn't have this before. <laughs> but we have descriptions, which is really nice. And there weren't descriptions on reports that were editable historically, which is a little silly. So we made sure to get that in there. So now at the bare minimum, you have a description. So you can type in there and say, this is you know, a beautiful gauge. And I can't spell, I knew I was gonna spell something wrong. I can't ever spell on a live call. So this I'm is- I'm just impressed gauge. you get the A and U in the right order in gauge. Yes. I can never get that one. I tried, I tried really hard. And <laughs> I got gauge spelled right. That's the number of times when you look at this too long, it just doesn't look like it's a real word anymore. So the problem here is, oh my gosh, I gave you descriptions, but now I'm making it so you need to write all of this. That's so much extra work. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could just use AI to help us generate descriptions for a report? Oh shoot, look, there's a generate button. Uh, so I'm gonna click that. And what we're doing here, this is one of those first little spots that we wanted to get AI. Yeah, at the end, what the heck is this question? Uh, this is where we could use AI to generate a description for your report. Um, and now what this is doing behind the scenes, I'll kind of give you the secret sauce. Um, what we're doing is we're using the metadata of this report. So I wanna be really clear here as we head into the world of AI with reporting, one of the big questions is like, what data does this have access to? What are we looking at? You will see to be able to enable this, if you're looking in your portal right now, this is a, a again, a, a public beta you can go hop into. Um, but when you do that, you'll see if it may be grayed out and you need to go into your portal settings and there's two settings for AI. Um, the second one is kind of customer analysis. And so all of this data is something that is private. You can go look into more of kind of the uh, Q and A is kind of attached to that page, but this uses the metadata of the report. 
and it says like, hey, we can play with this and we can kind of learn what it has to say. And I can click clicking regenerate. And really what we see here is like, oh, hey, look, it pulled in my target of 30 wheels deals a week because that's part of the metadata of that report. And you can really just, I mean, hit this a couple of times, see what's helpful for you. But when I think about this, something I want to be really clear at as we talk about AI and reporting is I do not expect AI to be smarter than all of you. I think that's a little silly. Um, you all have so much organizational context. If anything, this may seem like a little generic to start. And that's on purpose, because what we really want to do in this space is we want to help you work with AI. Again, it's not about replacing it's about allowing you to move a little quicker. It's about allowing you to not need to spell things wrong on a live call. Uh, it's about getting you through these things faster. So the whole reason here is that this is still editable. If I don't find that you know this is helpful to me, I can erase that, I can add in my own context, but let AI help you get started, help you kind of move through these somewhat confusing spaces a little quicker. Now, you know, let's go and I'll save this to, um, I'll give it the dumbest title of all time. Uh, I will save this to my dashboard. And so this is one space you can see where those descriptions are. But some of you are saying, Harrison, I already created all of my reports. I have many reports on dashboards already. This is not good. I don't want to have to rebuild all of my reports. And to you, I say, we can put it on existing reports. And so <laughs> I'm going to go all the way down here. Let's scroll through this way too long of a dashboard. Here's my little fancy deal report. So first off, one thing that's important is we do see the descriptions come through on the dashboard. If you don't edit it and you kind of just keep all the AI content, it will say generated by HubSpot AI just to help you out. But if you go through, you change this all out, that obviously won't be there. So you can see those on dashboards, but also any existing saved report I have. If I go over to the about tab, you'll see a little new. We also have that same description interface sitting in that space. So don't worry, it is something you can use on any report that you've already created. Um, if you're saving like a template from the template library, you'll see the same thing pop up. If you're generating a report, uh, if you're creating a report through the single object builder, or the custom report builder, you will see this everywhere. So it just makes it a little bit easier for you to be able to get through here, generate those, write the context you need into that description. And so one thing we do really want those, we want your feedback. So when you do this, Click your happy, sad face. Tell us tell us how you feel about it. That's really helpful as we continue to refine how this works. If you say, Harrison, that's not very good, you can click sad. It will make me a little sad, but that's okay. I'll get feedback. We'll make it better. Um, <laughs> just click happy faces. That's the best way. But no, we, I, we really do want feedback. So I definitely would love for all of you, like, hop into that beta, play with it, generate them. Don't feel bad to regenerate a couple times. See if it gives you something new. Um, it's something that's really, I think, can be helpful just to get that context of what these reports mean. And I even think back to some of that space of like, how do we understand some of the goals? How do we tell the story of this data? That's where it's so incredibly helpful to kind of put all of this into there. So, haha. All right. Uh, feature request from Royce. Can we get a generate for all existing reports button? Ooh, just backfill like all those empty description boxes. I like that a lot. Actually, okay. Quick question in the chat. I'd love someone, someone throw this in there. Um, we have all of these existing reports today, right? And many of your reports, if you look at their descriptions, let's see if I can find like an absolutely terrible one, are literally just gonna say like, this is, <laughs> since this made for dummies, that's amazing. I have no idea who did that. Um, but then some of them just say like, this is a custom report. And you probably have like a bunch of reports in your portal right now. I'm gonna open the this is for dummies one. That makes me so happy. Um, <laughs> some of these will just say, this is a custom report. One thing that we've been playing with, my actual question before I got distracted by how funny this was, is uh, would you all prefer for us to generate these descriptions from the get-go? And so if you don't have a description that it has one, and it'll say, you know, generated by AI, but should we backfill all of these? Um, should we have it automatically be there when you first generate a report? I'm curious to hear. I see a yes. I see a yeah. Yes. 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 Lots of percent. Yes. Yes. For sure. Yes, please. Yes. I'll keep reading these. I really don't mind. It's saying yes, 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 yes. Okay, cool. I'm just going to screenshot this and take it back to engineering and be like, yes. How do you know? Because I have a whole <laughs> real-time feed of yeses. Oh, yeah, there we go. Eh, it might throw off reps if it's not accurate. Ooh, there we go. Yeah, Chad, uh, Chad, you're correct. Harrison does love affirmation. Um, all right, Max, that's an interesting point. That is, that's exactly my fear. So don't replace the descriptions already there. Definitely agree with that. We don't want to be replacing anything. Chad, do we feel that this generated with HubSpot AI tag is clear enough? And this does show um, even on a dashboard. So if I save this, you know, we're back looking at this from a dashboard level. 
we do show that generated. Can we have task created to approve? Ooh, I like that a lot. Can we have tasks created? Yeah, that's a really good idea. Okay. Replace the short descriptions without the long ones. Okay, yeah, yeah, because some of them do have like a little bit more context. So maybe just the ones that say like, this is a custom report. Maybe we do it on that space. Okay, this is really helpful, folks. Yeah, there's a description generated by and not the report. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, that is a really good point, James. Yeah, or we're thinking maybe we're fearful that some folks are gonna think the whole report is generated by AI. James, that was like the best secret segue that you just gave me and you didn't even know it. I'm so happy right now. All right, so this makes a lot of sense. This is super, super helpful feedback, but I'm gonna capitalize on James' fantastic segue and say, oh, generate the report, you say. Um, all right, we got 10 minutes. I'm gonna scroll back up. Now, this is something that I'm about to show you. I wanna be really clear. This is early days. Um, we're just getting this going. But the question is, if we can go from report to description, can we go from description to report? Ta-da! You may have already saw this because I think like when I got up into the CRB, it was kind of sitting here, but the AI assistant. So going back to kind of what I said is like, okay, how can we help you tell stories? How can we help you spend less time, you know, clicking through tedium and more time using your awesome admin brains to build out really interesting, complicated things? With that, I know you all get badgered with a million really simple questions every day. We, I know you get all these kind of folks who are like, hey, I'm trying to look at this. Hey, I'm trying to run down this pathway. Or you're trying to build reports and you're having to spend time just getting started and click a bunch of buttons and not spending the time refining and like you're getting the perfect filter and doing a lot of that. How do I get that? It's a private beta. Um, we definitely, I would, the easiest way to do this, to be honest, is reach out to your CSM. They can ping me. You can also like find me on LinkedIn shoot me an email. You can even throw my email in the chat. I'm totally fine with that. It's hboyd at hubspot.com. Uh, right now, this is private beta. What I'm really looking for in this space, I want to be really clear before we hop into this. I'm looking for feedback. I'm looking for folks who want to come in here, play with this and say, this is what it's doing well. This is what it's not. This is a much harder thing to do than to generate a description. But let me pop this bad boy open. And so what we end up on is we end up a screen that looks just like this. And it says, hey, you know, tell me about the report you would like to generate and all we're doing in this place is we can grab i'll just grab this one that's already kind of sitting here we're playing with this page still but all we do is we type in a description of what we're thinking oh that's amazing dan like yes please put your portal id in that survey um but we type in our description we hit generate and we open a dictionary apparently oh, and we wait for the report to go for it and so what it's doing in the background let me tell you kind of how this is working is we're dealing with a single object report. So that single report, the single object report builder, this is kind of almost think we got AI pulling those strings. So when we think about what this can do, remember this isn't building crazy custom reports yet. We want to go down that pathway. We know we need to go down that path, but when we start, want to start with a space where you can say, hey, you know, let's just grab a really easy space where we can start to help you get not zero to a hundred, but zero to one and start to play with this. And so really what happened here is we just gave it this query and it says, hey, where are the leads coming from? It grabbed lead origin. I'm not in the best portal, so it said no value, but it said, hey, we're looking at lead origin and how many kind of contacts. And that makes perfect sense to say, hey, where are the most leads come coming from? And it pulled that together. Now, also we said last month, what do we look at here? Create date, it got last month. And so if we wanna edit this, maybe we go last year. Let's see what this does. And so this is really what I'm looking for feedback on from folks is, is hopping into a tool like this and being able to play with these questions because what we need to understand is what <laughs> we failed uh we need to understand what are the questions that we're like folks are going to ask and you know where are we slacking where are we not let's try a different question we'll go how many deals did we create last quarter i should you know maybe pick a better portal to play with this with but that's okay um all right and so there's a lot of different really simple questions we can throw in here and again okay how many deals did we create last quarter so the fun thing is when we say like last quarter, it's knowing, oh, hey, that's our last quarter. So we'll build those already in. We say, okay, count of deals, create it. And obviously this is a pretty simple question, right? Most of you in the chat could probably hop in and figure out how to build this. But the great part is we just threw this question in here. We got immediately to this spot. And all I can do now is I can either keep messing with it. I could save it. I could, you know, generate an AI description on my generator report. Thank you, James, for the segue. Um, but I could also go in and what's really important about this is this is something I want to be really clear that we're doing is 
this is not, you know, some one-off weird report that doesn't interact with the rest of HubSpot. This is a normal single object report. It's still editable. And so if you do this and it gets you close or it gets you something you'd like to now refine some more, or let's say it misses a part, you still can customize this. You can just click customize and immediately I just got dropped right into the single object builder. And so that whole selection data phase, I was able to just skip it exactly and just be able to customize and refine. And that's what I think is so important is it allows you to play with this and just say like, hey, I wanna take this, I wanna play with what it's doing exactly, I wanna customize it, I wanna change little things around. And that's super, super important, I think, that we're building AI to things that aren't just like toys. It's kind of the, the phrase I use all the time, it's, it's tools, not toys. I think there's a lot of AI stuff that's coming out right now that ends up being a toy because it doesn't connect to the rest of the system. And so I really wanted to make sure as we build this that you pulled in something that like, you know, you could take this and keep going. Um, all right. Can you try a hard question? Can someone give me a hard question? Uh, let's see. Can you try new contacts broken down by deal stage they're currently in? Well, we'll just throw that question. And Max, I'll throw your portal ID in that uh, thing. And you can throw every hard question out your heart desires. Um, let's see what it does. And this is exactly the type of feedback we need because as we're kind of working on this and trying to make this better, it's understanding what are these questions and understanding what folks are asking. So we know, hey, can we give it something that really is gonna start to go further? Okay, so we broke down, let's say, uh, okay, so new contacts. So we got contacts, we did it by their life cycle stage and we did it in the last 30 days is what we pulled together. So I think that got, you know, got decently close, I think, to what you're thinking. Obviously, again, sorry, this portal is not the best. I think it may break because deal stage wouldn't be mapped to contacts object. Ooh, yeah. See, and that's the big problem is today, this is, oh, we did get, let's see, what did this, what's life cycle stage in this case? Yeah, eh, not so much. So we got whatever this life cycle stage is, and that's the one that it pulled through. It looks like in this portal, life cycle stage is kind of a little bit blank. And so exactly, like, Maxwell. I think that's a that's a custom yeah. property given that the C is capitalized yeah, exactly. in life cycle. Exactly. It's a doppelganger property. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, and so right now what it's doing, um, which I, that is really important. So it's single object. It does pull in custom properties. It's not doing custom objects. And so that's the kind of space that we're playing in today. We want to continue to grow that. We can start to throw in, you know, like a little bit more like, like if we want to say how many contacts were added by country. And so it'll be able to, hopefully we'll see, uh, pick up like both on the Q3 and start to do simple filtering. And as we continue to get this better, again, private beta, we want to get this to a point that you all can hop in there. And so, yeah, we got our counter contacts broken down by country in this quarter. So it can do a lot of these fun little things just to get you a little faster. And so for admins, again, my thought about this right now is this is about saving you time, allowing you to maximize your time on doing the stuff that your smart brains can do that AI can't do. And then also as we continue to get this to be a little better then giving you the ability, even for some of those users who are gonna ask you questions, say, hey, try to throw it in here, see what you can get. For some of those folks who aren't familiar with the builder, maybe it can help them get started. I know also that could breed confusion. So I, I totally know that like today, that's why again, we're in private beta, we're still learning, we want feedback and folks like you are the most important people to give us feedback on this kind of stuff. All right, uh, let's see, I got some Q and A's maybe, this generating, okay, we got that one. Can you search for a report or description, Kara? Sorry, I missed that one. Um, no, that is not quite yet. That is the thing that we're definitely talking about right now. We know searching for reports, uh, we've just improved it a little bit. If you go and search right now, it has got a lot better at fuzzy matching, but we are looking to extend that a little bit further and say like, can we start to pull in additional context with not just titles, um, but we're getting into descriptions. So that's a really important piece. Uh, what company did not have a deal last year, but had to do it? Ooh, that's a really interesting one. I don't think it's going to do that, but uh, I'll throw the question in there, Kelly. That's a fun one. Um, each of these single object reports. Yes, these are single object reports. Uh, over in the chat, Bethany is asking, where is the best place to submit feedback for betas? Yes. And so, oh, fantastic. Thank you for asking. Um, I have no, not sure what this one grabbed. So, but let's say I generated this report for this question and I am not impressed with the result. Maybe it's because I had no data, um, but maybe it's because it didn't do a good job. Uh, hit that unhappy face and put your comments in there and say, this report did not give me what I wanted. I wanted to see. 
Blah, 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 blah. And this literally like comes back to our team. What's great is when you submit it this way, it shows us like what was your prompt. It shows us what the AI generated. So we can use this to kind of look through. And then if you give this feedback also, this is a perfect space that we can say, hey, you're willing to give some feedback. Let's reach out and let's let's chat about it. Let's have a longer conversation. It's super, super impactful. And again, I think my email got dropped in the chat earlier. Like, please do not hesitate to reach out to me about this. This is a really interesting, complex space. So we want to chat about it. Um, cool. I think uh, we're just about top of time. So we are at time. Um, <laughs> uh, yes. Lots of excitement here. More things to come. Uh, thank you so much, Hina and Harrison, for being here. Um, uh, yeah. Please, everyone, fill out that survey. Um, let us know what you thought of the session. Give us some feedback. Um, and if you uh, want access to one of the betas that was mentioned, if we could just aggregate it all in there, that would be great. Um, Deanna, as of like 15 minutes ago, I'm a Bevy admin. So I think what that means for all of you is I can export out the chat and the Q&A. So any questions we didn't get to, we can maybe uh, handle later. I'm going to explore this wild new world of being an admin. If any of you have advice, it's my first time. Um, but we are at the top of the hour here. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, thanks again, you two, for presenting. And uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. So everybody have a great Tuesday. Bye.